Welcome back, and we are now in Hour 3 with Tim Alexander, our co-host on Hour 3 on, on Thursdays. He's also often popping in because he's a history professor, military expert, a Christian, and he has an, a, a talent at doing what I call multi-level space chess, connecting some dots, and you have seven different topics today, uh, Tim, so let's get rocking and rolling. We may be able to continue much more into the, uh, the bottom of the hour, so uh, because we'll see how, how many topics and things we have from from our other uh, gentleman who comes in on our on Thursdays, uh, Chris Harris. I know there's nothing major that's been cooking in Fukushima. I've been watching my radiation detector, and for a week or two, the radiation levels were quote back to normal, but they're kind of popping up again, and like a like one of those little rodents that pops their little head above the ground, or you know, Groundhog Day, or gophers, or whatever you're going to call them. <laughs> so. Yeah. So, uh, well, so Tim, let, let's rock and roll. Well, yeah, what, well, I've got seven. I I I could have uh, I could have made this uh, twenty or thirty uh, list long, but we'd run out of time. Uh, these are things, problems, kind of on the table that we face in twenty fourteen. And you know, I I buried my mother on Tuesday, and I was looking back this year at uh, there were eight funerals. Uh, our funeral homes that I went to, uh, my mother, my her sister, my aunt, my sister-in-law, and several good friends and relatives and, and uh, neighbors and so forth. And you think, oh, wow, you know. And uh, you, you think, well, what's coming the next year? Well, I can't say who's going to live or die, but I can say, you know, just looking back, September, we almost had World War III. Let's look forward. And I'm not Gerald Clemente, and I, I wouldn't... Uh, attempt to be Gerald Clemente, but these are kind of broad political, social, strategic trends. Now, okay, number one, global economic depression, the exploding global economic depression, coupled with global austerity fascism, kind of the one-two punch from the globalist. Now, we are in a global economic depression. It is not a recovery from a recession. Uh, it is a global depression, and if you look, go into the statistics, it's probably as bad as the Great Depression already. In the United States of America alone, we have 102 million people of working age that are without, totally without employment. We now, have why, probably, why are we not having why are we not having riots? Because we have a. I would call a uh, Santa Claus in the White House who spends tomorrow's money for children or grandchildren or prints money out of thin air or robs from the middle class, which is being caught like a vice between the poor, expanding what I call the gruel class, and the uh, transnational corporations that are crushing us and exporting our business and well, technology. Well, and also, you know, the, the people that, what I call the lower upper class, the people that are worth one to five million, and I have a number of friends that are, you know, very comfortable in that area. Well, this money that is being printed by the, the, the Federal Reserve and dumped is mostly going into the stock market, and it's the one thing that's kept the stock market up. And some people mistakenly look at the stock market. Oh, it's good. It's, uh, it's, uh, there's, no, there's no depression. Things are good, 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 good. Oh, my stock's going up. Well, yeah, they're just pumping money into it. Uh, right. Eventually, you know, you're creating a false bubble. And what happens with bubbles? They pop. Always. You're kidding. Always. Well, yeah. Mean, I'm, I, learned, I, learned, I'm, I think we learned that as a kid. That <laughs> if you blow a bubble big enough, it's going to pop. Now, they, these guys are masters, and what do they do now? Rather than waiting until it pops, they actually create a new bubble. So they go from bubble to bubble. It's a, yeah, but you know, it's all based on BS instead of reality. <laughs> and eventually, lies have a way of catching up with you. Lies come from Satan. Truth comes from God. And right. you can only shovel the manure so long, and eventually people say, huh, I don't think, I think this is manure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Boy, it stinks really bad. Yeah. Let's go through this whole list. Then, I mean, we have so, I mean, look. Uh, I, I deal with I deal with students all the time, and and I've said this before on the show. But I ask them, guys, if you go out and I mean you really make up your mind and you give it everything you got, could you go out and get a job for ten dollars an hour? Now I don't even specify a forty hour a week job for ten dollars an hour. I'm a job for ten dollars an hour, maybe twenty dollars twenty hours a week. 
And almost all of them say no. Now, I, granted, I'm in the American Midwest. Maybe in some places the, 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 the $10 an hour isn't that impossible. But then the cost of living there is much higher, too. But the reality is we're in a world of hurt. I mean, we are in a world of hurt. And you also have to remember that there's probably 75 million more people who are grossly unemployed, who are making uh, 7 25 or eight dollars an hour and only working 20 or 30 hours a week there's people that work at uh, mickey d's at mcdonald's that can't afford to eat their junk food there because they uh -huh. don't make enough money by the time they they, they take a bus or, or or drive to work for a few hours a day they can't afford to do anything how would you like to try to raise a family on uh, maybe 300 dollars or 275 dollars a week after taxes Good luck. Well, uh, you have to be a financial Houdini to do it. Uh, well, oh, Houdini or a magician to to, uh, to create money out of thin air. Oh, no, that would be the Fed, wouldn't it? Uh, well, okay, oh, let's yeah. move on. Uh, okay, number two, continuing Israeli, and by Israeli, I, I especially emphasize Netanyahu, aggression, coupled with Saudi aggression, serving the New World Order. Uh, we were... We just got by in September. We were very lucky. It was a Cuban Missile Crisis event. And the, the driving force behind this, both in Saudi Arabia and Netanyahu in Israel, they're still in power. And they still want uh, a regional war. And that's insane. Well, it's worse than insane. Insane is just nuts. You can cure ins insanity or lock the people up. This is demonic. You know, this is a demonic infestation, and it hasn't gone away. And this is what we're going to be dealing with in the year ahead. Uh, just because we like to think, oh, well, that's behind us. No, we're not going to have a war. It's fine. No, that doesn't mean it's really behind us. The same forces that were there that almost blew up the world in September are still there. So we're going to have to deal with that. And uh, God help us, because it literally is a spiritual battle. Let's go to number three. New world order continues to move towards completion, the end game. The globalists have been at this now for roughly 200 and some years. They created really three world wars if, because the Napoleonic Wars were pretty much global, uh, and the first and second world wars. They we had the the uh, uh, the Cold War, which we spent untold billions and trillions on, and countless other wars. War is a big generator of of deficit spending. It's all about deficit spending. Follow the money. I always say, follow the money. You, you'll you, you'll find the rats. You'll find the evil. And and it's, they want to own everything. And that means they have to destroy the middle class, which they're well, well into that program. And look at these things as multiple programs, okay? They're well into the multiple program of destroying the middle class and whittling away at the next level, the, the lower upper class. Uh, the poor, well, the poor never had it so bad. Uh, and it's going to get a lot worse. So, you know, it's just all and on and on. And then they couple that with um, austerity fascism. I mean, you, you, how, you, you take food stamps, you cut back on food stamps when people well, don't have a job. Well, there's a simple the solution to that, though. First off, you don't cut it back. This is what I see is wrong with both the Democrats and Republicans. Well, number one, you make food stamps, food stamps. You can't buy booze, DVDs, uh, or trade them for other things, go gambling, or buy these gambling cards that are lotteries, you know, like the like California State Lottery. You have a system where I call workfare. You get rid of the idea of, of employment and start employment where everybody receives money to do something. And you give credits to employers to train people into specific jobs, even someone who's paralyzed from the waist, a veteran, for example, in their own apartment, and his one eye can do something valuable that makes him feel like a decent human being. Back with Tim. Tim, uh, let's continue. This is really important to understand what's going on. 
Um, okay, well, we've got... 2014 number- is, I call it, connecting the dots year. This is the year when we have the potential to remove Obama. I call Obama an This is the year when we have the tendency to realize just how horrible Obamacare is, despite the, what I call, crazy chihuahua look of Nancy Pelosi. This is the year <laughs> when we have the, as in the words yesterday, of our guest Phyllis Schlafly from the EagleForum.org, we have the chance of the most important election probably in the last 150 years. This is a year when Christians need to stand up and realize we have freedom of religion, not just freedom of worship. There's a big difference that Obama wants to take away is to make it a post-Christian nation, not just where you can speak your religion, but if you don't want to hire non-Christians or people that are gay, openly gay, including in the church, you can do so. Well, yeah, if you, he want, wants, if, you, uh, if you are a religious affiliated hospital, he wants to insist that you perform late term late term abortions, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Obama or anybody else, but I'm a Christian, and I'm not going to change because you want me to. I think Obama is the best candidate I can see for what I would call a false prophet. Could be, could be. I've, I've, in my own mind, I'm more focused on the Antichrist. I, not the well, there's two prophet, of them. There's but you, two. you may very well be right. Well, there's, there, remember now, and this is something that people often get wrong because the Bible interprets itself. It says there's a false prophet and a beast dictator. There's two guys at the end, not just one. False prophet, and I've said this before, will be a U.S. president that will force the mark on the world. You can see it with the data centers in Utah. The beast dictator which is the prescient military leader in the world with the Russian advanced technology is Russia. Russian physicists are the best on earth right now. Yeah, we have advanced 21st century death weapons, but the Russians have found all the chinks in our armor and they've armed to the teeth of the Chinese. People don't understand that Mr. Putin, who is a conservative, by the way, and he's an Orthodox uh, Christian, we have a situation now where it's been re- in recently in Newsweek where he said, He's in moral high ground compared to America, and that's actually true. Yeah, that, isn't that amazing? When more Americans now look to the, the leader of Russia as moral and as a leader compared to the leader of the United States, it's I mean, really obscene. the world is upside down. Right, and the fact is, that over in Russia, and he's even had days where to try to promote, you know, to the Russian population to start having babies again. He said, you know, procreation day, he called it a few months ago. <laughs> Go home and procreate. <laughs> I'm not going to touch that. Not, no, but the thing is, the Put- no. Putin, Putin is, Putin is like a, is like an evangelical Rambo, and um, <laughs> and, and, and and honestly. The Russians have gone through hell with the Russian Revolution 100 years ago. Oh, yeah. And we're coming up to 2017. And what, ha- what the Russians went through, by the way, was the Bolsheviks, the Sabbatean Satanists, so-called, they call themselves Jews, they're not Jews at all. As Jesus would say, the synagogue of Satan. We have a situation where they've seized the global control of banking and printing money. We're now in a, moving quickly toward a peace treaty in the Middle East. Um... Uh, I think it's going to happen next year. I think 2014 is going to be a fulcrum year. It's a year when we're going to see if Republicans really are going to be Republicans. The year when we see if we're really going to take over the Senate and impeach Obama. The year when we nullify Obamacare and start providing health care to all of our citizens, rich and poor. And if you want want to have the American dream, how about make it and start doing things like employment, not employment? Well, where you know, everybody gets paid uh, a salary. That, everybody gets everybody gets that something. Monster Adolf Hitler could take the broken, hyperinflationary uh, 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 in Germany uh, in the 30s, and in two or three years turn it around and make it the most prosperous country on earth. I think even Obama or anybody in a, in leadership position in America could turn America around. All of this, all this economic crisis, all this mess that we see is directly man-made and is engineered to put us where we're at. And we only have to turn it around. The country's still here. The workers are still here. The factories may be shut, but the buildings are still here. I mean, yeah. we can we could turn ourselves around so quick. America America is America, the best country on earth, and I defy anybody to prove me wrong on that. I mean, well, it, but we've just yeah. had 
thieves and corrupt evil people yeah, but, purposely but ruining things for us all. But, but if you've been robbed, it doesn't mean you're not a good person now that you've been robbed. It means now you're awake. I, I thank God every morning for my family, and then I thank God for Valerie Jarrett and Obama and Michelle Obama and all the other crooks like George Soros. I think it's fantastic. What God's done is allowed them to choose just like Satan, and Satan is actually an object lesson to mankind. You can be made the highest cherub in my kingdom. You can come to the throne of heaven, but if you turn on me, I'll cast you out of the first heaven, and eventually I'll throw you into the lake of fire and destroy you. So what God's saying basically is, I want a relationship with you. I want you to be my children, but you have the choice. And that means that our civilization is going to come back because Americans have now been foisted with the devil incarnate in Obama and Valerie Jarrett and George Soros and all those other maniacs. And the ultimate end of, of communism and what we call collective Nazism, which is a form of global corporatism or, or fascism, is the end of a good chunk of the population of human beings. Collective uh, well, Obamacare wait, is going to kill people. Or so. Well, Obamacare is going to kill a lot of people. It's going to drive a lot of people out of medicine. It's going to close a lot of businesses. I mean, it's going to become evident that even the Democrats, in order to save their own necks, they've already removed seven or eight provisions already, which is, by the way, illegal. You can't have executive orders from Obama changing a law that's already passed. That's right. <clears throat> so what we have is a situation where uh, the progressive communist Satanists are creating self-destruction and now they want to get uh, people like the the guy from uh, one of the top rock group pop rock groups here to be a sp sponsor to push uh, you know <laughs> i i think it's hilarious that these people think that if they get a celebrity to tell us to do something stupid we'll just do it because he sings a good song uh, yeah it, it you know i i went through and looked at for me what uh, i i could get i can't even get platinum in the air coverage under obamacare but gold uh with being on uh social security and and so forth and it would it wouldn't hardly cost me anything but here's the thing uh it's not it really health insurance it's catastrophic health insurance uh, yeah, and exactly. all these people out of work well it's six thousand or five thousand up front you have to pay well that's fine if you have it but if you're out of work or you know if you're twenty thousand a year you barely ha have your nose above water well gee you know where are you supposed to get five thousand and you walk into a, a er and as you walk in the door it clicks five thousand and you sit there for another hour and another five thousand clicks and they haven't done anything to you yeah. uh... so you know it, it, it when you're dealing with a system that is rigged to take your money and you don't have the five thousand or the six thousand or the seven thousand uh, down what are you going to do and they haven't solved the problems they've made the problems worse uh... i need i wait, let's get back to my list here yeah we'll get uh, back to your list and we'll see um, Oops. <laughs> we're, 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 let's continue we're, we're gonna continue because this is important it's really important to follow up and uh... we'll see if we have a little update from uh... Chris. A little an update from Chris, and we'll see um, if he's able to come on. Welcome back, and uh, uh, we have Chris Harris on us. So we've got a lot of topics to cover. Tim, you want to mention some final uh, issues on your list? Uh, I'll go through them real quick, and Chris has got some really important stuff. So yeah, so we're we're going to uh, jump into this. I, uh, I, I'm going to do this. In about two minutes. Minutes. I'm just going to go. Uh, number four: continuing global climate crisis, which has been manufactured by the globalists. Uh, uh, there are lots of different things I can go into, but I'll just mention like the British petroleum oil disaster, which has killed the uh, loop current, which has weakened the Gulf Stream, which is a steering mechanism mechanism for the atmospheric jet stream and that's why uh, America is freezing right now and right. it's early December and God only knows so uh, what the rest of this winter is going to be like number five we're heading expansion. toward we're already heading toward a, a monitor type ice age monitor minimum exactly and that means this is amplified it okay continue 
Number five, expansion of population reduction programs by the globalists, uh, basically food, water, medicine, quality of life, fracking, cellular warfare, et cetera, et cetera. They're killing us here, there, everywhere because they want us dead. Uh, number six, uh, we're looking at advanced biological warfare as a major event somewhere down the road, and it may not be that far away. Uh, and number seven, uh, get, which is the lead into what you guys are going to talk about, I'm going to let you talk, is Fukushima, because this is a, a horrible nightmare that is not going away, no matter how they try to spin it. It's not going away. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, let's get into some of these facts. And again, we have a lot of things to talk about today, Chris. So, yeah, thanks a lot, Tim. Any breaking okay. news, by the way, pop in anytime. Uh, I'll be on hour two tonight on the Rents Network talking about this and other issues and kind of connecting the dots. Uh, so, Chris, what did you find? What's the latest? Hello, Chris. Hello, Chris. Oh, I guess yes, you must I'm still be, here. Sorry. I yeah, had you must have been on mute. There you go. I, I, okay, I, so I Chris, do that because uh, you did, I did already distracting uh, noises in the background. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so uh, I guess one of the interesting news is the lack of news of the silence about the progress of the spent fuel pool, um, uh, <clears throat> unit for spent fuel removal. In other words, that uh, we're really getting it after the fact that they're not right. giving us blow by blow information, which is something I would like to see. Uh, like we could, they could be giving us a, at least a daily update, and they're not doing that. Tesco has decided to tell us after the fact and say, "Boy, everything was okay in that one." You know, we can, we can tell them about that, or you know, you can get another one. Just it, they could edit the truth in, in hindsight, other than giving it to us right. uh, in real time. Right. And which means uh, I wouldn't expect that if you're going to have any kind of an accident there, you're going to know about it that fast. And you're certainly, they're not going to be very forthcoming in telling you, uh, you know, <laughs> you better uh, take cover. So I wouldn't expect that from them. So that's, exactly. that's some, some important. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so let's, let's go through some of the other issues here. The first one you mentioned uh, in your email is the idea of how fast is the progress. What we have is a sum around 66 a total out of 1,533 R4 spent fuel rod assemblies have been transferred. I'm watching my radiation detector. It was stable for several weeks, you know, back into almost the normal range, and it's been spiking again, which tells me they're getting at the end of what they call the low-hanging fruit that's easy to pull out. They're going to start having some release of radiation, or they're getting burps deep underground from the corium that's venting out through these steam tubes that I mentioned are caused by tritium, from the zirconite cladding on these fuel rod assemblies, and because the the boronated rubber is gone, <clears throat> that means that they're going to be generating a lot of tritium. You also noted in your report about the tritium is quote unremovable. Now this is is quantum nuclear physics. I'm going to explain here, so you won't hear this from someone else, including a lot of the so-called nuclear experts. Tritium is what's called a DNA intercalator, which means it actually gets in the double helix and displaces the replication of DNA one or more base pairs, usually one, which means it moves over one codon so your DNA can properly replicate when you have a tritium atom of water in your DNA helix. It's very bad. The only way you can remove it is use a heavy water plant like Port Hawkesbury in Nova Scotia where they make it for the heavy water plant for the Candu reactors in Canada that they export worldwide. Heavy water slows down neutrons so you can increase chain reactions in nuclear reactors like the Candu reactor or the pebble bed reactor they use in South Africa. So uh, this is very serious. Tritium is vented from all, not some, all. The big 12-foot high Hollywood-style letters, all nuclear reactors release tritium. <coughs> so what you have to understand is if you actually measure for isotopes, you find a ring of, of death in various distances around all reactors up to 150 miles. And that ring is primarily related to tritium, secondary thorium and strontium, uh, atoms also are released in cesium-134, 137, and radioiodine. All of these are released from all nuclear reactors. They all are leaky. But the most leakable of all of them is tritium. It, there's no way to contain steam turbines or boiling water reactors that will not release tritium. Now what happens is in Japan, they're releasing a massive amounts, and you mentioned uh, the NRA is saying the tritium is unrecoverable and has to be dumped in the Pacific. So now they're saying, well, we never knew that we could ever fix it, so we're just going to dump it. Just have a nice day. 
Wow. Uh, and this is yeah. like, this is hard to believe, though, isn't it? And this is the International Atomic Energy Agency is uh, is in, is uh, encouraged TEPCO to consider discharging contaminated water to the Pacific. So now we have a collaboration with the International Atomic Energy Agency, which is not swatting the Chinese for building a lot of new reactors with old style technology, which is stupid. We have the Nuclear Regulatory Authority and. Uh, Chairman Tanaka stating it would be inevitable to discharge the contaminated water in the Pacific, and the IAEA is agreeing with these maniacs. Wow. What, what are well, your comments? Well, the comment the, where it goes back to well, what we talked about a long time ago is uh, it's pretty sick. that the IAEA seems to have been in, you know, either in hiding or uh, you know, illusion or. or but anyway, I, I didn't want to get get into that, but it, it uh, doesn't surprise me that, the, uh, that you're not going to get. Well, don't uh, worry, Deagle is there. Is it, oh, you, you, I'm a universal iconoclast. If anything is there that is what I call a smell, like I'm a bloodhound against the word, the smell of scientific, geopolitical, spiritual, or otherwise BS, I'm going to go after it like a bloodhound and tear it apart like a like a, a piranha. Um, that's really their job. That's really the IAEA's job. Really they're, not about their job. they're not doing their job. They're, they're not. Yeah. The reason is the Atomic, International Atomic Energy Agency is a we want a cohort of the United Nations, which has population control philosophy. The fact that no one and no and no government, or even the American government, but internationally, is doing anything about Fukushima means it's global genocide. This is global genocide against the unborn, the elderly, or anybody weak or sick. It's going to cause untold amounts of cancer. Decreased IQ because when it releases radioiodine, it destroys your mitochondria and lowers IQs. It's going to do all kinds of horrors to life forms on the Earth. It's good. I call it turning the Pacific Ocean to the Plutonium Sea. But anybody who doesn't think the sea connects to all the other seas is an idiot. Colter, if you have a mouth that opens up on this, I'm going to stomp on you really hard for making a statement. You think it's going to be contained in the Pacific or the Northern Hemisphere. You're just wrong. It won't peak as high. It'll take longer, but it'll still get to you. It'll get to you. Yeah. So uh, please, and, please and, continue. You know, so what else is happening? Well, yeah, it, everything. See, yeah. <laughs> all right, so we're all focused on one good, good sized part of, of, of Fukushima. That's the movement, movement of fuel at Unit Four. But all the other, all the other little catastrophes haven't stopped occurring. Oh yeah, it's it's the open source <laughs> reactor one, the Mox reactor, where a lot of fuel was actually exploded because of a hydrogen generated critical reaction which caused a small nuclear explosion and blew it up to 60 kilometers away we have st we basically steam turbine t t tubes that are basically created from the corium generating superheated steam at probably a thousand degrees or more pushing it out like the volcanic tubes you see around the big island of Hawaii and those steam tubes are actually creating vents under the ocean floor out thousand, you know many miles away probably connecting which is why if you go in the last two years to the tube trains in Tokyo, in northern Tokyo, you'll see your radiation detector go crazy. You can go on YouTube and see them. And you see smart Japanese coming around these radiation detectors say, oh, look at this. Oh, my. Really high, huh? Yeah, let's see those numbers go. They're doing that because there's radioactive air in the tubes of the trains in Tokyo. Back in a moment. Welcome back, and um, this is uh, pretty catastrophic. We've had a lot of reports that are posted up on E&E &E News. I want to basically make sure that the people in Japan understand what we're saying, and the officials in Japan. We are calling for revolution. We're not calling for niceness anymore. We're calling for the Senate and upper house. I can't believe the fights that broke out there, and this still shoved this damn bill through. But I'm going to read here, Saturday, December 7th. This is from uh, the report here by the... Uh, Saturday, December 7th, the Obama administration welcomes the passage of Japan's secret, uh, state secret protection law and Japanese press goal seeks. In the minds of the Japanese press and the readers, the United States government under the Obama administration dislikes if it doesn't, if it doesn't, it should and it must. The Japanese right-wing administration shouldn't uh, Abe and it condemns if it doesn't, it shouldn't, it must, the state secrecy protection law. So when the Japanese reporters write about the U.S. reaction, if any, to the law, they try their best to elicit the responses they want to hear, feeling that they will still hear what they want to hear and write about what they want to believe. And, of course, the real response was this. Uh, the U.S. administration 
the, uh, <clears throat> the U.S. administration response was basically saying that they think it's a good idea. Um, here's a transcript of the, of the section about Japan, and it says, uh, question, and again, this is a um, brief in the State Department, a daily press briefing, to find out exactly what the response was. And uh, Ms. Harf, which is representing the Obama administration, says, uh, National Secret Protection Law has finally passed the uh, Parliament in Japan today. Can we have any comment on that? And Ms. Harf, I do. Just uh, give me one second. As you know, information security plays in a critical role in the alliance cooperation, and we welcome progress on strengthening policies, practices, and procedures related to the protection of classified information. Wow. A foundation of our alliance is also a shared commitment to universal values, freedom of expression, freedom of the press, and so are there, how are you going to have freedom of the press? They won't even tell you what you're guilty of if you say anything about anything. It's, it's ridiculous. So this is the Obama administration. Uh, full steam ahead. Make no, more nuclear reactors. By well, the way, they say he's green, but it's radioactive green. This is Obama. Old style nuclear reactors have no place in the 21st century. We need new style tokamak fusion reactors, safe hydrofracking that doesn't put chemicals in the land and destroy the, the, the water table, and more. Your comments, uh, Chris. I mean, for the Japanese, I've got another article here called Maya's Blog. The, why are we in the last days? And I think they have a number of points. The first one is Japan passed the state secrets law. Second is the second major event to occur in the last few days is recorded atmospheric and groundwater contamination levels, uh, which are taking off like a rocket. The third major event is the shutdown of the TBS camera, sometimes either late December 8th or December 9th. Shutdown of the TBS camera, <coughs> particularly alarming given the significant levels of emissions visible over the last few weeks. That's the one that's watching the site. Number four, Fourth major event occurs a de facto increase in permissible exposure levels or raise the level through the ceiling in Japan. Number five is mass adverse mortality events constitute the last major event. Many forms of Pacific Coast fauna are experiencing huge adverse mortality events, meaning mass die-offs, a dead ocean. Uh, this is no joke. Uh, you know, when you look at these specific things, what do you think, uh, Chris? Well, I think that this is a multifaceted problem bigger than anyone could have ever imagined and that we're just picking away at you know pieces and parts well, of it well, and well, remember really John, if you're if you're my age I'm, I'm 61 and a half going to be 62 in february so i love johnny carson and he was one of my favorite comedians and one of my favorite skits is when he became a swami put the swami hat on and we try to predict and swami says you know <laughs> he say these jokes well Swami Deagle, and I'm, not, I'm just being a little facetious here, I'm not prophesying or anything else, is uh, here's what I see collecting from information that's public domain so you can check it out yourself. The Abbey government is doing this because they're worried about a bond market run and a run on their corporations which will collapse the economy in Japan. Uh, that's likely to happen in 2014. So I predict an earthquake or a major release that will cause a stock market run and trash Japan. Number two, I predict that uh, when there is a big release, there'll finally be at least a number of people that will try to get off the island, Hanshu. Number three, I predict that when the radiation riser, we still won't get, we'll be stonewalled by, by Obama, but they'll be starting some universities, including the one that stonewalled me two years ago, University of California, Berkeley. They're finally poking up their head, asking the government to do testing data on water and food. And guess what the, what the government said? We're not going to. We're not going. To, we're not going to tell you if the water or food is radioactive, or even tell you if there's plumes over your city or town, and rain is going to fall is radioactive. We're not going to tell you if you need to do hazmat and seal off your doors and windows and put HEPA filters in your home. We're not going to tell you if you're unborn, you should be taking Nutridyne or other things to protect yourself from radioiodine. Or we're not going to tell you to take adequate levels of things like bone builders so that you don't suck up all the strontium ninety because your bones are missing minerals. We're not going to tell you this stuff. You don't need to know it's in fact even asking those questions under the Abe government is considered a form of terrorism when obama and his miss harf make these statements it's obvious that they don't have any consideration for the public at all they have a disdain for our very existence what do you think chris so uh, allow me to break that law for them over here and ask <clears throat> a question that i haven't seen one one sentence on uh, as, an, as a safety evaluation for their moving fuel, that is the drop cast accident. That's a that's an accident where we have to evaluate for and discuss uh, 
in, in great depth. And that is, if you have a spent fuel cask that weighs 91 tons, and you have a rigging failure, and this cask falls, even at a, at a height of only 30 inches above the floor, we know that it would punch right through the bottom of a healthy spent fuel pool in a intact building. I would like to see some discussion on what would happen with a drop cask that they're, that they're doing, uh, you know, uh, several times every, about every two weeks, I guess they're moving this. I would consider that a pretty dangerous operation, too. They're, you know, it would, it would, let's put it this way, I know what it would do. It goes right through the floor. It would drain the spent fuel pool and, uh, pretty yeah. quickly also. And, and in a yeah. building that's already been compromised. So uh, I, guess I, I guess I shouldn't raise that concern, otherwise I'd be breaking that law. Yeah. Let me read off a portion of the stupid article here. Well, under live science, it's obviously the government did this, okay? So this is down here under the section, and I'm going to post it and cut and paste this up so you can see it yourself. Tracking radioactivity's path. The radioactive plume has three different sources. Radioactive particles followed from the atmosphere, from the ocean, contaminated water. And they're basically saying that uh, the amount of radiation being released here don't worry, be happy, like, you know, Danny McFerrin, Bobby McFerrin there, that album came out about a decade ago, that, uh, you know, the water is, it's, with dilution, you know, dilution is a solution to pollution. <laughs> don't worry, when that radiation receives you at somebody Becquerel's per cubic meter, it won't hurt you. No, it won't hurt you, it'll just kill you. It won't kill you right away, necessarily, it'll, it'll kind of be sneaky. You'll wonder, why do I have no immune system? How come I have leukemia? Why have I turned diabetic? How come I'm hypothyroid now? Why is my child now got a decreased IQ and mentally retarded? Why am I continuously miscarrying? Why did grandma die early because she got overcome with the flu because she had no immune system? How come all these things seem to be happening to all my friends? Everybody's sick. Guess what? We're all being poisoned. And the usurper in chief in the White House who should be in jail rather than prancing around the White House or Marine One or, or Air Force One, he should be in, in jail. And people like George Soros, his boss actually if he goes to places like Britain, he'll immediately be arrested because he's a criminal. What we have is global criminals are getting away with murder, and now we've got, I call it the Jack Skellington version, we call Obama, and uh, the Oogie Boogie man or woman is now Janet Yellen, and she's yelling for more money. She's going to not print $85 billion a year, it's going to be $120 billion, I mean month, she's going to print $120 billion a month. And they're not, nobody's talking about Fukushima, this is the most likely thing to crash the marginally third, it's very close to the second largest economy on earth, in the largest single industrial area on the planet, which is greater Tokyo area, uh, trying to evacuate this number of people when there's a major radiation release is impossible, which means you're going to get a lot of acutely sick people. Uh, what do you think, Chris? This is going to get, I think 20, the, the big issue of 2017 is a, uh, a uh, collapse of the Japanese economy, a massive radiation release, uh, radioactive food in North America, people panicking to try to get safe food uh, in the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, those are just a few of the top issues, but I think it's going to get. We have opportunities to get rid of Obama. We have opportunities to get rid of Obamacare because we're all going to need health care when we're all getting a lot more radioactive. Your comments. Yeah, I think you hit the nail right on the head on that because uh, <clears throat> it's so many different areas are are well, impacted that's what, by. What? Why do you think the the Abe government is being cheered by Obama and Ms. Harf to say it's a great idea to have this kind of tyrannical regime? Oh. That if you think anything negative about your tyrannical Nazi government, it's a crime, and Obama yeah. is for it. Guess what? I can hear lock and load sounds all over America. Can you hear? I can hear a giant click sound. Can you? Sure can. Yeah. I can. I'll be on hour two tonight on Rents. Back with the firing line. Thank you, Chris.